Hello, hello, hello. Happy, happy day two. We're in it now. Like if you have made it to day two, you're halfway through. Okay, just like went totally black for a second. So hopefully you're, hopefully you're still here. So yesterday was all about uncovering, about magic, or not magic, that's today, about uncovering and getting clarity. And hopefully you went through the assessments and the assignments. Your shares were so freaking profound. And I encourage you to read each other. So if you're tuning in through the email, we had some really powerful shares in the Facebook community group about what it is that we're working on for the rest of the year, whether it be the finances. Um, so people are looking to add some clients to their travel business. And the cool thing about this is that the answers are so varied in the sense that this process will work for you if you are like trying to tweak a couple things. You're like, okay, I got to like iron out my budget. Do you hear a snoring puppy at my feet? One moment. She's, she's licking her paws. There's a snoring puppy at my feet. Sorry for the little grunty Frenchy noises. Um, there, with this works if you are looking to just fine tune. And then one of the other answers was like, I've got to blow it down and start over again. Like I need to leave the toxic relationship. I need to make a better life for me and my kids. Like that's a pretty big deal stuff. And I'm here for it. I'm here for it. So before I get started today, on day two, um, I I think cards are kind of a fun tool, whether you're, these are just the bar affirmation cards. There's no like, you know, over the top spiritual one way or the other. Um, I like a lot of the spirituality tools as really just confirmation of whatever you need to hear and experience at that time. So I already shuffled these. This is gonna be our little mantra as we get through the training today, obviously. We're wearing it together. Today's affirmation is, I am ambitious. I am ambitious. Facebook is reversed, so I hope that that comes across that way. I set high goals for myself and achieve them purposefully. Oh, dang, we're talking about goals today, sister. I didn't even plan that. See, this is, this is the cool thing. Get yourself a deck of little affirmation cards. Get yourself, I don't know, spirit angels, whatever you need whatever you need. Okay, before we get into today's material, I um, said that we would be doing some prizes. If I put them into this handy dandy wheel picker, wheel picker of technology, one of these jobbies, those of you who participated and shared your heart and your answers and are like part of this community of this thing that we're doing called life. And so I'm going to pick three people. And if you are one of the three, I'm going to send you a $10 Starbucks gift card so you can get your caffeinated or uncaffeinated beverage of your choosing and as if we were just like cozied up together on really oversized comfy chairs sharing our hearts and our dreams and all the things. All right, so here we go. Bum, bum, bum. Person number one is, okay, this is like, okay, it's gonna stop on this person, good. Rachel Van Shoke, Shock, Shoyuk, so sorry, Rachel. Rachel and I met at Tony Robbins a bajillion years ago, six, seven years ago, I think, I don't know, a million years ago. And she is such an inspiration in her space. I was reading her answer about being a coach for mamas and she has littles and it's a whole thing. Okay, so you definitely need some caffeine probably. All right, so we've got Rachel is number one. I'll need your email so that I can send this to you via the email come directly from Starbucks. All right, number two, bum bum bum, is my girl Brandy Lopez. Brandy Lopez also has been in my world both from Beach Body Days into coaching this year. She's done incredible work in our containers, and um, she even pre-enrolled for this upcoming group that you'll hear about tomorrow. So that's exciting. All right, last one, and then we're gonna get started. Last one is, dun, 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 Kira Pogue. Kira and I met very randomly through somebody else we both follow on the good old, on the good old Instagram. Um, she is a powerhouse in her social media business. If you need anything along those lines, reach out to her, connect with her in this space. All right, ladies, let's move on. Very, very fun. I'll do this again tomorrow. So continue participating and we will go from there. So today's notes, yesterday, hopefully you got that 
bird's eye view of exactly what's going on in your life. And like we mentioned, had I been running this group at the beginning of the year, we would kind of like lay out all of those little pie pieces and say, all right, if we want to plan ahead for the next 12 months, the next two years, three years, then um, let's try to even out that wheel. Like that's the whole, like anytime you go to any of these seminars, you guys are like, let's even out the wheel. And that is important, but for our purposes, we are talking about sprinting for the next 12 weeks. And we're gonna go into a more in-depth look into that tomorrow, but, and I don't even wanna say quarter, because sometimes when we say like, oh, I've got quarterly goals, that means we're still subconsciously being like, it's part of the bigger year. There's something really magical that happens in our brain, our psyche, our spirit, when we do these little 12 weekers. 12 weeks is long enough that you will see some pretty serious momentum and growth and actual like check marks, gold stars, if you will, in the area that you're working towards. Um, it's also short enough to, on the negative side of the spectrum, not just completely take you down. It's, not, it's short enough to where you're like, gosh, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Like this seems so insurmountable. It's also short enough that it creates a sense of urgency. So like, for example, you know if you've set a yearly goal and you have a bad month <laughs> uh, and you're like, well, it's not that big of a deal because I've got the whole rest of the year. This usually happens in the beginning. You're like crushing it January, February, and then March happens and you're like, ooh, I really fell short, but like no big deal, sis. Like, And you're like cheerleading yourself. You're like, no big deal because I've got the whole rest of the year to make it up. Like. It just, I got this. And um, the bummer is, unfortunately, as time goes on, you less got this because our results compound accordingly. So 12, like if you're gonna have a bad week, you now know that that's like a big percentage of your 12 weeks. So you're less likely to let long periods of time go by when you're out of alignment, when you're not being congruent or following through on the things that you said you wanted to do. So that's what we're talking about in terms of our goal setting for today, that they're much more short-term short goals. We're looking at the next 12 weeks, like which I said will kind of butt us up until the end of the year. And the, the um, answers that you guys already gave are so, so good. What I want us to do today, because today's uh, topic is called like making magic, uh, it's one thing, as you know, you guys are all incredibly smart capable uh, go-getter women. You're obviously can, like, you care about yourself and the world around you and your communities if you're in a group like this. Like you just don't involve yourself in personal growth if you are not a decent human being <laughs> who wants growth and progress moving forward. So all of that to say, if you're already that person and you already know all the things that you should be doing, then there's a little missing piece. And that missing piece is the magic the spark, the magic that is literally inside of every single one of us. If there is something that I can leave you with during this training is there is nothing more powerful woman to woman. So I hope you give this gift to somebody else today, tomorrow, this week, next month. There's nothing more power than recognizing the essence of another woman's magic. I am here because I literally geek out on your goals. Mine too, let's be serious, mine too. But your goals, seeing them typed out, I'm like, oh my God, we gotta go do them. We gotta go, we gotta like, this woman is meant to create magic in the world. And of course it's hard. And of course it's like not familiar. And of course it's scary because you're the first one to do it. You, you're the first one to do it. Sure, other people might be business owners and moms and have tried to lose the last 15 pounds, but you are the first one for you that's doing it. That's the magic. That's the magic. And if we are gonna keep our head in the game and actually care about that when things get hard, the piece that's missing is the vision. The vision. If, and I wanna also, I probably should have started yesterday off with this, but today this seems like the exact time to be talking about it. We all have different um, limiting beliefs, I guess you would call it, things that keep us stuck, things that keep us stuck. One of my most common things that keeps me stuck is that I go into things with the mentality of, I already know that. And I probably lean back and I probably multitask with another window open on my computer. I already know that. 
So if you are here and you're like, not only have I done a vision training with you, Lauren, but I've probably done a vision training with the girl off of YouTube, with my sales team, with my church group. Like I have done vision training. I want you, I would encourage or offer for you today to go into this. Like this is the most magical topic that exists because you guys, it is. We literally create something out of nothing every single day of our lives if we're intentional about it. Every single day we create something that is brand new, whether it's small or big. Um, I just heard Jamie Hearn Lima, the founder of It Cosmetics speak recently. And I don't know if you know this, but she sold her cosmetic brand to L'Oreal for $1.2 billion. So she's one of the like, I don't know, five to 10 women that's ever created a billion dollars before. And she didn't go into it with like, I'm going to be the billion dollar saleswoman. I'm going to speak on all the stages and write the best selling books and all of that. She went into it being like, I think there's women out there that have rosacea. So that's what I mean by like, this is the woven piece of magic that you get to sign up for every single day. And the way we get there is out of our heads and into our hearts. That's how we get into the magic vision. This, this like, esoteric thing that people talk about. This is more than just writing out your goals. You've got to viscerally feel it in your body because the universe and God and all the different words for that works in frequency and energetics. It works in the things that we believe we are worthy to have, do, be. Not the things that we want. We all want a million dollars probably. I want a million dollars. I clearly, my worth has not caught up with it yet. I'm working on it. <laughs> working on it. It's, in the, it's, on, the, it's on track. Uh, so all of that to say, we get to call it in. And the way that we do that is there's got to be like, and those of you who have had these moments, you get it and you feel it and you know it. And if this is pretty out there for you, just go with it. You're here anyway with me. Um, you will literally get these pings in your nervous system, in your body. Like it's as if your body is having light bulb moments. Like, you know that, that, that packing tape, that those packing bubbles that you'd pop as a kid? Like, your nervous system is doing that, but with, like, the most energetically beautiful lights that are like, we are supposed to be doing this right now. That's how you come back to the table after a rejection, after wondering how you're going to not only establish this really scary boundary with an abusive partner, but how you're actually going to create lasting change and enforce that boundary. Like these are all big, big deal things. And so you're gonna need to summon up some of that magic that you've got inside of you. Okay, so how do we do that? Um, I'm gonna do a meditation. Not right here, right now. I want you to do it on your own time. I think I kind of put this in the topic today. So I wanted to give you some tips before I posted the meditation because it's kind of weird. Um, one of the best, as someone who who has done lots of different meditations and, and loves meditation and there's seasons of life where I do it really consistently and my whole entire world changes for the better. All my, all the genres change for the better when I have a consistent meditation practice. And then, um, there are times where like time goes by and I'm like, oh, I don't really want to like sit for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever it may be. And it feels a little bit clunky getting back into it. I also want to dispel the myth that, we are all supposed to just sit there quietly and wrestle the thoughts in our head. Sitting quietly is the most advanced form of meditation. If you can do it, beautiful. That is incredible, incredible. I think there is no shame. You're not doing it wrong. If you start with any kind of guided or supportive meditative practice, whether that's like the insight timer for five minutes, um, maybe you sign up for like a meditation challenge on YouTube, like all of that stuff counts. It, it all counts. Uh, the, the piece that's important is that you're getting it consistently in your psyche. That part counts. All right. So all that to say, the meditation that I recorded for you is around vision and it starts with a breath work priming exercise that I don't think it was invented by Tony Robbins, but I, this is where I learned it. And I wanted to give you a visual before I like let you loose over to it. So you're like, what? is she saying and huffing and puffing on this meditative recording. So what you'll do is it's gonna start with what's called priming breath work and your hands will face out. You're going to reach, and I'm gonna go out of the frame, you're gonna reach up as high as you possibly can 
And then I'll say, you're gonna pull down so your hands just come right back into you like this. You'll go, and you're gonna breathe in and out of your nose super fast while you do it. So what it looks like, yep, here I am on a live recording. Here we are. You're gonna go as fast as you can. So when you hear that being prompted, at least you know what I'm talking about. We'll do 10 sets of three. So you're gonna do 30 breaths, and then I'm gonna say pause. And we're gonna do that three times. The purpose of this, it is quite literally pumping the blood, pumping the lymph through your body, and it should give you a pretty potent energy charge. Also, this works, like not even the meditation, but if you just do this breath work like at four o'clock in the afternoon where you're like, I don't know how I'm gonna get through the next hour of work, it will give you an instantaneous zap of your own natural energy without any kind of stimulants or caffeine. Okay, so there's that, because you're oxygenating your body. My hope is that when you do this meditation, I want your key thought is how can I drop more into my heart? Your head rules the show 99.9% .9 of the time. Give it a rest. Give it a rest. Our brains can be so obnoxious sometimes. Think, how can I settle into this heart space even more? Okay, that's how you're gonna do the meditation. Um, there's some music at the end because there will be a writing prompt. So I think it's about, I should know this, it's about maybe like 50, 10 to 15 minutes of like me guiding you through a thought work process. And then there's just some like binaural beats at the end so you can jot down the things that have come up because that's the important piece. All right, what else do I have in my notes today? Meditation tips, um, meditation, but, but really the main question when you think about the magic question is if time and money were no longer an issue, how would you design your life? And this is normally the question that's posed for more long-term goals, right? Like if you are like, I'm working towards, um, one of my long-term goals is that our family can travel anytime in luxury. I mean, y'all, I will buy, like I am not a designer clothing kind of gal. Um, I enjoy like nice fancy restaurants, but that's like that. Like my thing is I just want us, like I have this vision in my mind because Jake is from Denmark and we go back to Europe couple times a year, hopefully. Um, although we're taking a break with the babies, that's a whole thing. That is a whole thing. We're taking this year off from 20 hours of international travel with toddlers. Uh, but with that said, going forward, my vision, I have this distinct vision of us before they are like even the age of five, of us having those lie down seats, lie down seats where we like are snuggled up with our kids and we have some movies on and we've got like some quality food, which is kind of hard to come by in the airlines. And we are traveling transatlantically. We probably take a red eye so that we wake up nice and rested, ready to start our European adventure. Like that's a big, that's not really in our financial, it does not make sense for us to do that financially right now. We're saving for a house. So all of that to say, the reason I'm having you do this now, if you're like, Lauren, I thought we were just doing this like 12 week sprint thing, we are. I want you to write it down and I want it to be the subliminal track that plays in your mind every single day. Cause that's the thing that's going to get you excited about not spending, not buying lunch out every day. Like it, that's the correlation. It also, the other thing that I suspect it will do is whatever comes up for you first is pretty important to you right now. You know, it doesn't have to always be the most important thing. Like some people, um, Someone shared that they are working on their fertility journey, which I imagine is a pretty big deal in your life right now. That was my, that was a big, big puzzle piece of my life for about three to four years. And now it's not, now it's not. So now it's like a different bucket. But I imagine when you do this exercise, there's gonna be a bucket that comes up that feels like it, once again, kind of like pings somewhere in your body. And that's what we're gonna follow for the next 12 weeks we can only really do one thing at a time if we're working in these short sprints. Um, all right, bum, bum, bum. So let's, let's see what comes up with that. Yes, Kira said 100%, yes. Let's see what comes up with that. And then from there, tomorrow, we're gonna talk about how to actually reverse engineer it, which might sound, once again, might sound pretty straightforward, but I wanna talk about what comes up for you and how it correlates into this 12 week puzzle piece. The other thing that I would recommend as you are 
writing down your goals. I think the resources for today, let me pull them up really quick. The resources for today have you identified, this is good for like kind of that sifting method. If you're like, I tried to feel it in my body and I don't feel it in my body yet. And I don't really know what she's talking about. Um, I just wanna pull this up so I tell you correctly. That if you're someone that's a little bit more pragmatic, gotcha, get in, totally gotcha, uh, is day two crafting your vision. The resources that are in here is gonna be more about the sifting method. So what are the top 10 goals that come up and then how can you narrow those top 10 goals to your top three? And if you can, if something specifically stands out, you're gonna narrow it down to your top one goal that you wanna hit these next 12 weeks, maybe two. But remember, this is a sprint of what you really wanna put all of your time and attention and focus on for the next 12 weeks. If the two are related, they can totally count. So for example, if you, uh, I'm gonna give, use Michelle's example. She was like, I wanna work on my nutrition and I wanna work on my finances. Overconsumption like, is both of those. And I'm not saying that necessarily she's overconsuming food, but when we are lackadaisical about our finances, we are traditionally lackadaisical about what we're eating. They always go hand in hand. So if you're saying I want to save money and maybe like clean up my nutrition or lose five pounds or 10 pounds or whatever it may be, those two can get clumped in this thing. They're allowed to both come on our 12-week journey with us. If you are like, I want to start a lifestyle hobby, like I want to take it. Like for me, another thing on my list right now is I would love to take art classes. I would love to sculpt, to paint, to draw. I would love to take art classes. It's not really on my radar right now. I've got a business to build. i got babies to raise. So it's like in the background is something that I want to be part of my life, but it's not going to be a part of our 12-week sprint. All right. That is it for today. Uh, for today's stuff, I'm gonna post the day two slide with the resources, the little worksheets, and the meditation. So it's if you're on the East Coast, I know it's like three o'clock now, it's about noon on the West Coast. I would say do it tonight. Do it tonight when you get quiet. And another couple like helpful hints for meditation is um, AirPods or earbuds is a huge, huge tip. It really helps hone in. It really, really helps. So do something like that find a quiet space, any kind of relaxation tips you can do before meditating, like take a shower, make sure your kids have been in bed for at least 15 minutes so that it just gives you a little bit more space <laughs> to be receptive to it. All right, um, tomorrow morning, I'm gonna come back a little bit earlier. Tomorrow, I will be tuning in with us at 9.30, to wrap us up, is that right? 9.30 or 10, I believe it's 9.30. And we'll talk about how we can put this all together for that 12-week sprint. All right. Have a beautiful afternoon.